everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you a fast, easy way to remove satellite trails from your deep space images. Because during the winter, a lot of our favorite targets do have some awful satellite streaks going right through them, including the Angel Nebula, the Witch's Head Nebula, of course Orion, and many more. And while a lot of people like to blame Starlink for all their problems at night, this is actually not the main culprit, although it is a growing problem. The reason you see these awful satellite streaks is because of the geostationary satellites up in orbit. And if you were to take a look in Stellarium, well, here's what you'd see. Right now I have this set to show all the satellites up in the night sky. If you want to do the same thing, you can go over to the configuration window, click on the plugins button, look for satellites, click on configure, and then just turn on labels, orbit lines, etc. That's pretty much all I did. And then once you've done that, make sure you hit save settings. And now when you zoom in far enough, you should see all the satellites up overhead. And in this case, we're going to be looking at two different targets that I recently photographed. The Witch's Head, which is right here. And then also the Angel Nebula. And what we'll see is that if I go through here on our time, the stars appear to move, but these satellites stay in the same place. And that's why they're so problematic. And this also makes them much more difficult to remove during the stacking. So while the Starlink satellites might be a pain, at least they're moving around enough that way during the stack they should be eliminated. But because these geostationary satellites don't really move, the stacking software thinks they're actually part of the image and it keeps them in unless we alter some settings. I just want to make sure we cover this that way you know what the problems actually are. And in a lot of cases, it's satellite TV. I'd recommend Googling some of these just to get an idea of what's ruining our night sky. You might be surprised. Now that we understand what's causing these problems, let's talk about how to fix it in our photos. For this, you will need PixInsight. If you haven't made the jump to PixInsight yet, believe me, I understand. However, you are going to want to get it. That way you can properly remove the satellite trails from your photos. Because in PixInsight, we have a script called Weighted Batch Preprocessing. This is what does all the stacking and it features a lot of advanced tools that you're not necessarily going to find in other stacking software. Inside of WBPP, what you want to change is under the Image Integration Parameters. When we click on Integration Parameters, start by turning on Large Scale Pixel Rejection with the High value. When this is set to High, it should do a good job of removing those satellites. However, it might not be perfect. And so it's recommended to change the rejection algorithm from auto to Windsorized Sigma Clipping. Without getting too technical, Sigma Clipping is designed to find things that are not consistent from frame to frame and then eliminate it from the final photo. In this case, we want to do that with satellites. Finally, we'll lower the Sigma High value from 3 down to 1.9. And I should mention that I found this particular setting over on the PixInsight forums. There's a great post that you might want to read up on your own. I'll have a link down below or you can just search for this and you'll find it. But this guy was also photographing the same target, the Angel Nebula. And those geostationary satellites that we saw go right through there. Getting back to PixInsight though, that's really all you have to do. Winds rise sigma clipping for the rejection algorithm, 1.9 roughly, large scale pixel rejection high. That's all there is to it. And this should fix the satellites in your photos. The only other thing I want to mention is that once you've gone through and stacked this data, if you're photographing another target that doesn't have crazy satellite trails, you might want to just reset this back to the defaults and that should work better. So once you've got all your settings dialed in, we'll click on the red X to go back. If you haven't done so already, you can load in your light frames. And this would be a good time to mention that, you know, if you are photographing some dimmer targets, you want to have a lot of data. I currently only have about five hours of data for the Angel Nebula, and I think about six hours for the Witch's Head. And as you'll see, the photos are going to be very grainy. That's why I'm going to try to get 20, maybe even 40 hours of data for a nice final image. Assuming that you loaded in your lights, flats, darks, whatever else you might have, you confirmed everything is configured properly, then you can go through and run the stacking software. And if you are watching this video and you don't have Pick Insight yet and you're kind of overwhelmed by what's going on, I do have a Pick Insight for Dummies course that I updated a couple months ago. And from the feedback I've gotten, it seems to help a lot of people out. So you might want to check that out just to get over that initial learning curve for this software. Next, we're going to take a look at some comparison images and see just how well this turned out. For these comparisons, I'm going to go into the master folder, 
which is created by WBPP. And I'm not going to open up the auto crop. That's not going to show me the relevant data. I'm just going to grab the master light file. Okay, so what I've done is I've loaded up my stack of photos with the rejection algorithms and then with just the normal stacking algorithms. And when we open up the files, we actually get this rejection file first. This shows us all the satellites and planes that have found and what it tried to remove. This is very valuable for troubleshooting. You also notice that there was a lot of hot pixels that were rejected as well. And without going off on a tangent, this is why you want to start dithering if you haven't done so already. Because with dithering, your composition is going to change slightly between every photo. That's going to allow the random noise, the hot pixels, static noise, and more to spread out over the course of the night. That way the stacking software can identify it and remove it more effectively. So if you're not dithering yet, you should definitely give that a try. But we can see just how obscene the amount of satellites in this photo are. This is another low rejection, not much here. And then this would be one of our photos. Then we have the second photo, more or less the same thing that we saw earlier, a lot of satellites. Next, I'm just gonna run these both through some very basic processing. I'll just speed this up and then we'll see how they both turned out. Okay, there we go. With the stars out of the way, we can actually see the background a lot better. If we zoom in, I think it's pretty clear that the image on the right was the one with the satellite trails. That was using just the default max quality settings in the stacking software. The image on the left, that's the one where I applied the large scale pixel rejection along with the Windsorized Sigma clipping. And it's safe to say there's not really any visible satellite trails left in this photo. Let's take a look at another part of the image. It really is a night and day difference. This one looks considerably better. And this would be a good time to mention that, again, this is about five hours of data, not exactly a lot for these dim targets, even from a Bortle 2. That's why we want to try to get 20, 30, maybe even 40 hours of data to clean this up and enhance that detail. So that was our first comparison. I think it did a nice job of showing all the problems with the data. Let's take a look at another comparison. This will be the witch's head. And I've already got a project, so I'm just going to load it up real fast. Okay, here is example number two. Again, this is the Witch's Head Nebula. Only about six hours at most. Very grainy. Needs a lot more work. But if we take a look at this portion of the photo, we see the same thing. We have these streaks of light coming through here. They're not quite as obvious as they were before, but they are still detrimental to the photo. And with the settings that I showed you today, they're no longer a problem. And that's about all I've got for you today. Thankfully, that was pretty straightforward. So I hope this helps you out if you are struggling with these geostationary satellites like I am. And now you know it's very simple. You just go into WBPP, assuming you're using PixInsight, go to the integration parameters, turn on large scale pixel rejection, and then also the winds rise sigma clipping. You might also want to lower that sigma high value to around 1.9 or so. That should also help to rein in those satellite trails. The final thing I want to say is that I understand Pix Insight is overwhelming. The stacking takes considerably longer than any other program out there. It can also eat up a lot of free space on your computer temporarily. With all that in mind, this should still give you the best quality final image, and it can also help to remove those satellite trails very easily. So if you've been holding off on using Pix Insight, you might want to give it a try. And for more information, I'd recommend checking out Adam Block. He's kind of the master of this software. He's got his own course and plenty of good YouTube videos. I also have my Deep Space course, which goes into some of this. You might want to check that out. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you get some clear nights this winter to capture some great data.